Hey y'all, welcome back to Tina Smooth TV. As y'all can see, I'm in my prayer closet. So, and today I came up with this new thing that I'm doing that now called Sabbath Saturdays. Because we all know Saturday is the seventh day of the week. And that's when God rested on the seventh day. Sunday is the beginning of the week. Okay. So, today is Saturday. Friday is the sixth day. And the Sabbath is Saturday, and Sunday is the beginning of the week. So, I came up with my new thing called Sabbath Saturday. No, I'm not a Jehovah Witness. No, I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Bible. So, no. I just read the Bible for myself and figured out that he rose on, I mean, he rested on Saturday, not on Sunday. Worked six days and rested one day, which is today, which is Saturday. Now, yes, we're supposed to worship God every day, but I think it's important for me and whoever else think it's important for them. I can't tell nobody what to do, but for me to appreciate the actual Sabbath is very important to me. I worship God and talk to God every day, but to have a special day for the real Sabbath day is important to me. So that's why I came up with Sabbath Saturdays. And Sab I always take Holy Communion on Saturdays, so I wanted to get y'all to join in with me if y'all wanted to i got my cranberry juice which i'm not gonna drink it all for the sabbath but after we done i'm gonna drink it all i got like three more though and i got my bread we know that it's not the real body and it's not the real blood but these are symbolic symbols of jesus christ's body that was put on the christ and the blood that was shed for all sins so just in case for anybody that didn't know that's what these two are okay so let me read a scripture about Holy Communion. I have to look it up in my phone. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay, there you go. Okay, it's John 6, verse 53 through 54. Jesus tells us that unless one eats his body and drinks his blood, we have no life. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He adds in John 6, chapter 6, verse 54 through 56, that his body is food and his blood, blood a drink. Okay, and then here's another one. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. That's John 6, verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of the bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Okay, so that lets us know that we do it like symbolically, like, but the Holy Spirit lives lives in us so i do it every saturday because i want to stay connected to the vine and i have to pray about any sins that i may commit it that week because who know who like me and ain't perfect and always doing something wrong you know, we get better as time go on but we are sinners and i believe god leaves stuff in us wrong so we can continue to pray and talk to him because if we get everything right we'll feel like we don't need him we'll be comfortable with where we are and we'll feel like well we don't need god no more so that's what we'll be doing. So, I always start with the bread. And everybody, uh, take a minute. You say whatever prayer you need to say about what you need forgiveness for or whatever. And I know this is not live, so y'all can always play it back every Saturday. If you want to do Holy Communion every Saturday, like, I I'm going to do it every Saturday. But if you want to do it today and you probably miss missed it earlier, you can always go back to this message or whichever other one that i post okay so i always ask god to forgive me for all my sins and i'm i finna start my prayer now i'm sorry god forgive me for all my sins forgive my viewers for their sins lord god forgive us of our transgressions against you lord god and we thank you for the body of your son jesus christ lord god without the body we would be nothing, Lord God. Without the body of your son, Jesus Christ, we would be no more, Lord God. We would be non-existent, and we thank you, and we appreciate you for the body of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. You didn't have to do it for us, but you did it. So we take this bread in semblance and remembrance of the, your of your son, Jesus Christ's body, being laid on the cross for the world's sins. Okay, so now we take the bread. 
My father took off a little too much. You, you don't have to take off that much bread when you do it, but maybe I did. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the body, Lord God. Okay, so, and when you take the the bread as a symbolic symbol of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, you you cl keep your eyes closed. You talk to him, and you just get in in the atmosphere of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now we're about to play over the bread. I mean, over the blood, which we use in grapefruit juice. It's just a symbolic symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross. Okay. Lord, we thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord God, that was shed on, shed on the cross for the mission of, of the world, seeing Lord God. We don't deserve it, but Lord God, you did it in a way, and we just thank you, Father. We ask that you forgive us of all our sins and all our transgression, Lord God. We pray and we thank you, Lord God, and we worship you on this Sabbath day, Lord God. Thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So do, you don't have to drink the whole juice when you're doing the Sabbath, but if you want to, you can, like... That's all it takes. It just takes just a little bit. And you're like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And you can have a fresh start for the rest of the week. It feels so good when you do it. Have a whole fresh start for the next, until that next Saturday. You come to him and you pray. Even if you feel like you ain't did nothing wrong, you just pray for the unknown. You know. And so, the second part of this is, I've been reading this book by John Ramirez. Ramirez. I don't know if y'all know him. But he used to be a satanic um witch a warlock and he used to uh worship the devil he was like a high priest in the devil's kingdom and he turned his life over to jesus christ and he got this book called unmasking the devil and um it's i i, I wrote down the parts faith versus the flesh because i believe the church needs to understand and hear like the difference between faith and the flesh and i'm gonna read some of the stuff what i wrote down what he said the church is trying to fight a supernatural battle using their falling man nature, and that would never work. Fig tree religious system don't work either. And he told us to read 2 Timothy verse 3 through 5. Okay, and then what else he said? He said, when Adam and Eve were defeated in the garden, they covered themselves with fig, fig leaves because they lost their true covering with God. When we lose our true covering with God, we try to replace it with something else and that's dangerous for any believer dangerous for any believer because that brings a religious system tied to a religious spirit and the devil is all over that and in the now and in the new testament jesus cursed a fig tree because a fig tree represented the religious system of that day the fig tree was a spirit of barrenness and no few there was no evidence of the hand of god god upon someone's life so basically he's saying like the church is is like a symbolic symbol of the fig tree um in the testament what Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves with basically because the church are not the church is not bearing any fruit like they're open every day they're doing stuff but they're not bearing any fruit they're not saving any souls they're not casting out demons they let people come as they are which you should in a church. You should let anybody come as they are. I don't care if you're gay, straight, a prostitute, or drunk, whatever you is. You should be able to go to church and come as you are. And people should accept you as you are. But does that mean people get, continue to come and they're not changing? If people continue to come to church and there's not change and they're not changing, that church is not bearing any fruit. That church is not the church is basically patching up their wounds, like preaching. It's okay messages and not letting the world know that we actually are in a spiritual battle, a spiritual war with Satan. And they're not letting the church know that. They letting the church, they making the church believe that we're no longer in the battle because Jesus died for our sin. No, the Bible lets us know we're still in the battle. We still have fights to fight in the spiritual realm. And if they don't understand, if the church, if the preacher don't even understand that, his congregation, con congregation is not going to understand that. So, this is Sabbath Saturday. I'm finished talking about unmasking the 